Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my tutorial. I just wanted to put together a few quick tips for beginners to sculpting in Blender in 2.92. Well, let's get started. Well, first off, we're going to want to start in sculpt mode. If you're not in sculpt mode, you can go to new sculpting here. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is what tools I use the most. I do use majority of the tools, but the three I use most are going to be the draw tool, the crease tool, and the snake tool. We'll go over these tools real quick. They're the ones I use most for my sculpts. Snake tool is really good for getting geometry where you want. And this is the tool I use first and foremost when I start all my sculpts. Just uh, simply get geometry right, and get things into shape where I want them before I start doing anything else. The next tool I want to talk about is the crease tool. It's a really good tool for pretty much everything, putting in noses, wrinkles. This can help you dial in your shape too. Next tool I use is the draw tool. The draw tool is going to allow you to add height to your sculpts, details, volume. Tip number two, I just want to talk about a couple of useful key shortcuts for when you're sculpting. The two shortcuts I use the most are definitely shift and control. Shift is going to bring up your smooth tool. So as long as you're holding shift down, you got your smooth tool activated. Control inverts your brushes. For example, the draw tool can be used to add volume to your sculpts, or if you hold control, it can be used to take away volume of your sculpts. It doesn't work for every tool, like the snake tool, but for things like draw and crease, it's going to work really well. You can get a nice ridge or you can get a nice crease. The last key I wanted to mention was the F key. You've probably seen me use it a few times during this video. It's to scale the size of your brush while sculpting. Tip three. I want to talk about Dine Topo versus the default gulp setting. So what we've been using up till now is the default sculpting. And as you can see, it's kept our mesh nice and uniform. Uh, with the default sculpting, you're never adding or subtracting your from your mesh in any way. You're just moving. Uh, with the Dine Topo selected, you're actually going to be adding and changing your mesh. So you can see we're adding a bunch of polygons here. Just by using the crease tool. And it, it also will change all your quads to tries. The advantages of Dine Topo are being able to get a lot more detail out of your sculpts. The disadvantages are adding a lot of polygons. So using Dine Topo is almost always going to need re retopologized. I do prefer working in Dine Topo when sculpting. The tools will handle slightly different, but it's easy to get used to them. A little practice. Tip four for sculpting is actually sculpting in parts. Um, especially if you're not using Dine Topo, 
you can find it easy to pull your polys too far. We'll add uh, another object in here. Just a sphere. We'll subdivide it a couple times just to give it a few more polys to work with. Take it in the sculpt mode here. So we're not in Dine Topo anymore. We're gonna go into mesh mode so we can see what's happening with our mesh. So you see when we pull, we're actually stretching these polys. But if you pull them too far, it's not gonna look very good. So instead of doing that, we add just another object. So back here at our sculpt, I want to put, I don't know, some horns on this kitty cat looking thing. So we'll take our, we'll take our draw tool here. We'll just kind of do this, you know, take our crease tool, make it up. A little bit, a little bit like that. So instead of sculpting these in and trying to pull horns out of here, is we're gonna get something that looks like that if we do that. So we're gonna go back into object mode and we're just going to add another object in here. Mesh, I'm going to use a use vSphere and I'm going to subdivide it a couple times. If you're working in Dyn Topo, you don't need to subdivide. Sculpting in different parts will also help texturing because I'm going to want this horn a different color and texture than this face. So having it separate part will help in the future. Well, those are my four beginner tips for sculpting and blender. If you have any more questions or video ideas, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.